Good morning. morning. Welcome to St. David's Episcopal Church on this very warm Sunday morning. Um, I invite you to stand and join us in our opening hymn, number 411. Sorry, number 410. Number 410. In the blue hymnal, number 410. Our service of Holy Eucharist Rite 2 continues on page 355. And for those of you who are wondering why I'm not uh, dressed as I usually am, it's it's just not robe weather. I'm sorry. (laughs) Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray together. Almighty God. To you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons.
A reading from the book of Hosea. When the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take for yourself a wife of whoredom, and have children of whoredom, for the land commits great whoredom by forsaking the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, daughter of Deblaim, and she conceived and bore him a son. And the Lord said to him, Name him Jezreel, for in a little while I will punish the house of Jehu for the blood of Jehu, and I will put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. On that day I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. She conceived again and bore a daughter. Then the Lord said to him, Name him, name her Lo Ruamah, for I will no longer have pity on the house of Israel or forgive them. But I will have pity on the house of Judah, and I will save them by their Lord their God. I will not save them by bow or by sword or by war or by horses, or by horsemen. When she had weaned Lo Ruamah, she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said, Name him Lo Ami, for you are not my people, and I am not your God. Yet the number of the people of Israel shall be like the sand of the sea, which can neither be measured nor numbered. And in the place where it was said to them, you are not my people, it should be said to them, children of the living God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The response appointed for today, the seventh Sunday after Pentecost, is Psalm 85. Let us pray this psalm responsively by whole verse. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have withdrawn all your fury and turned yourself from your wrathful indignation. Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you prolong your anger from age to age? Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, 
just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you are circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or of observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. To you, Lord Christ. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you, Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. 
Will you pray with me? Through my words, O God, and in our hearts, show us how to pray. Please be seated. So as I've been reflecting on this passage of Jesus' instructions and how to pray, I can't help but have that old song running through my head, O oh Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz, right? It's, and that's, I feel, that, that song is sort of playing in the background anytime we start talking as Christians about prayer, because especially with some of these examples that Jesus gives of, you know, God will give you whatever you ask if you're just persistent enough. It makes it sound like God is some kind of genie, right? That we are somehow, that praying is successful if we get what we want, that we, that is, we get what we ask for, and unsuccessful if we do not. And if it's unsuccessful, you just need to keep at it. Just keep on asking, and eventually that, that Mercedes-Benz is going to come, right? And it's, it's tricky, and it, it, I think this problem has been exacerbated by the presence in, in this country, particularly of the so-called prosperity gospel, which is um, a kind of a movement, um, what most would call a, a heretical movement within the church that says that um, prayer and, and faithful living will give you uh, financial bl blessings and financial benefits. And so if you, just, if you just pray hard enough and you just live the right way, then God will reward you richly and, and will, will send you money somehow. I don't know if God uses um, Western Union or, or what, but, um, but that somehow that, 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 you know, good living earns you material rewards. And of course, that's not true. But it's still there, this idea that if we pray and we don't get what we ask for, then we've done something wrong or we are something wrong. But when Jesus talks about prayer, I think it is something more complicated than, hey, look, if, you know, if your friend knocks on your door in the middle of the night, you know, you're not going to get out of bed. Um, but if he keeps bothering you, you know, you're going to do it. So how much more then? Will God, who loves you, be willing to jump out of bed and give you whatever you ask? It's, it's more than that. It is about encouraging us to persist in prayer, not necessarily because of what we are going to gain from it, but who we are going to become because of it. That as we pray, we are not necessarily changing God's mind, you know, putting a thumb on the scale in, in some cosmic balance but rather we ourselves are being transformed by the act of prayer, by the act of drawing near to God in prayer. And part of the reason we do this is because spending time in prayer is building a relationship with God. It is offering to God those things that are on our minds and our hearts. And yeah, sometimes that is things that seem frivolous and even silly. Sometimes it is, God, I wish my car would start today. Sometimes, and we've all prayed this, God, please let there be a parking space close enough to the entrance of the store. We've all prayed it, and when it's showed up, we've all said, thank you, God, right? And it's not that that means God has somehow so arranged the universe so that we could have our parking spot, but rather that we are acknowledging the goodness of God in creation, and we are offering to God the, the concerns and the frustrations of our daily lives because God cares because we are in relationship with God, and that is what matters in our prayer. It is building that time of relationship. And so, when the disciples come to Jesus, who is always spending time in prayer, they ask Him, Jesus, won't you teach us? Won't you teach us how we are to pray? What are we supposed to do? What does it look like to be your followers? And we hear that clearly John the Baptist had particular prayers or a particular way of praying that he taught to his disciples. And so they, they want to say, well, what will mark us as your disciples, Jesus? How will we pray? What will our prayers look like? And he gives them the prayer that we still use today, the Lord's Prayer, the, the Our Father. And what's beautiful about it is with those two words, our Father, we are drawn into relationship. Because first we pray to our Father. 
We pray not just to, to my father or to, to some generic father, but rather we pray to someone who belongs to all of us. And so when we pray, we're not alone. When we pray, we are literally joining our prayers with all those people of faith throughout the world and throughout history who have lifted up and offered their prayers, their concerns, their worries to God. So we pray our Father because even when we are alone, we are praying as a part of the Christian community. And we pray also to our Father, which is, of course, a loaded word depending on your relationship with your father, or if you're a father, your relationship with your children, to call God Father could be a, a deeply painful experience. But what I think Jesus is trying to get at here, as we so often do, Jesus is trying to use language to describe something that is fundamentally impossible to describe in language. And it's like that with the relationship between us and God. We might well say our mother, which has its own level of baggage to it, or our parent, again, its own levels and, and challenges with it. But we are praying to someone who loves us and somehow on whose existence ours depends, someone who cares for us, someone who is not just a father or a mother or a parent in any of the ways that we in our brokenness try and attempt to be a parent, but, but the perfection of a parent, a God who cares for us, who loves us, who knows what we need even better than we know ourselves. We are praying intimately to a God who longs to be in a relationship with us. That is what it means to pray to our Father. We are praying together, and we are praying with someone, to someone who we know, who loves us, who cares for us. But if that's true, if when we pray, we are praying together with other Christians and other people of faith, and we are praying to a God who, whose children we are, then when we pray, we are also implicated in it. When we pray, we are caught up into the life of the community, into the life of God. I heard this story once, and it has all of the earmarks of one of those stories that preachers make up to have a good sermon illustration. But I'm going to tell it anyway, because it's a great illustration that someone was praying on, on a mission trip, and they were in a country where there wasn't a lot of food. And they were praying with their hosts from that country, and they, they offered a prayer before lunch. Um, and they said, dear God, thank you for this food that you've given us, and we, we pray um, for those who do not have food uh, this afternoon that, that you would feed them. Amen. And their host looked at them with something like horror in their face and said, what did you just say? And they said, well, I was praying for us and for food, and, and you know, we always pray for the hungry because we're, we're about to enjoy food and there are people who aren't. And this person said, you can't. You cannot pray for the hungry if you're not willing to share your food right now with them. You can't pray for the hungry if you're not actively working to feed them, to alleviate their hunger. When we pray... We are implicated. We are caught up in the kinds of prayers that we offer because that is what it means to pray as a Christian. We worship a God who came among us in the flesh, who doesn't exist just in some airy spiritual realm, but, but lives in this world here and now. And so when we pray, we are called to act. That's why so often when uh, some tragedy happens and, and politicians and celebrities start talking about offering and sending their thoughts and prayers, that's why there's such a, a caustic uh, backlash against that. Because to pray without being willing to act, without being willing to show that this prayer has changed you enough that you want to do something about it, is just to offer empty words and to try to check some kind of a box, because that's what prayer is about. It's about changing us so that we are the type of people who we think we are when we pray. So we, when we pray for the hungry, when we pray for the sick, when we pray for those who are in our lives, what we are doing is, is renewing and refreshing the connection between us and them. We are building up our relationship with others as we pray for them. We're bringing them into our minds. And maybe it is even th that simple reminder as you, you pray for someone and think, gosh, I haven't talked to them in a while. 
How are they doing? Or you're praying for someone who you know is going through a hard time and think, I ought to sit down and write them a card. I ought to go see them. I ought to go bring them a, a casserole or, or just go and have a cup of coffee with them. I ought to, to offer something of this prayer with my own body, with my own life. Because the truth is that Christian prayer cannot be divorced from Christian action. We can't pray without acting. We can't act without that coming from a transformation within us that happens in prayer. It was C.S. Lewis, the author, who wrote once that I don't pray because it changes God. I pray because it changes me. I pray because I become the kind of person who prays. I become the kind of person who loves. I become the kind of person who is a little bit closer to the child of God whom I was created to be. But that's not the only time that we pray. We also offer our prayers when, when the world is falling apart. We offer our prayers when, when we are awake, awoken at 3 o'clock in the morning in a cold sweat and feel like everything is falling apart. We offer our prayers when the phone rings and it's a terrible diagnosis and we don't know what to do. We offer our prayers sometimes when we don't know what else to do. Sometimes we pray not because we are acting on it, but because we don't know how to act in this world. Sometimes we pray just because we need God, just because we do need something. So how do we pray then? We pray our Father, our parent, our mother. We pray to the God who loves us, who cares for us, who is present with us, and we pray in the presence of the whole communion of saints, our Father who art in heaven, who, who is in heaven, whose name is holy whose name is so separated from the day-to-day the -day of reality that, that it is separate and yet deeply and intimately connected with us. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. God, make this world your world. Make what you desire to happen, which is goodness and love, happen here on earth. May that be something that comes about, something that I might even see in my own life. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us, give me, right now, what I need. Just what I need for just this moment to bear under just the burden I have for today. Not tomorrow's, not next week's. I'll be praying for those then. But right now the burden I have is maybe the worry about tomorrow. Right now the burden I have is maybe the situation I'm in right now. And that is the daily bread that I need. Oh God, give me what I need in this. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Make us into the kind of people who are able to forgive, who are able to offer forgiveness because we have received it. People who understand that you cannot forgive without having been forgiven, and you cannot be forgiving, forgiven without trying to forgive in your own life. Help us to be drawn into that, that cycle of grace where we receive and offer forgiveness in equal measure and gradually become the kind of people whom God is calling us to be. And give us, save us from the time of trial. I like that better than lead us not into temptation because I don't think God leads us into temptation. But save us from those difficult times. Save us, God. This is a naked prayer, something that is just what we need to ask sometimes. Save us from the hard times in life and deliver us, rescue us from evil. Save us from what will kill us, God, because it's all yours the kingdom, the power, the glory, all of it, this whole world is yours. It all belongs to you, and we belong to you. We offer ourselves to you because we are already yours, and we pray in this way so that we might become more fully who God has created us to be. We might really be the kind of people who can lift our hearts and ourselves to God who can offer our world, who can offer the challenges of the world, knowing that we are doing all that we can and that God is doing all that God does for us to alleviate us, to bring us out into a place, a way of being, where we and the whole world can look at our lives, can look at this, and know 
deep down in our bones in a place that can only be transformed by prayer, that we are children of God. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and join with the voices of the church in every time and place as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, beginning on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three, found on page 387 of your prayer book. Page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you that your name may be glorified by all people. Remembering especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Thomas, our own bishop, Robert and Shannon, our assisting bishops, and Andrew, Chris, and Gail, our clergy, we pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your words and sacraments. Remembering especially Joseph, our president, and Janet, our governor, we pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Remembering especially those in our parish who have asked for prayers, Jim Andrews, Sue Andrews, Mary Archidiacono, Jackie Belmonte, Jamie Carpenter, Patty Gagne, Roland Gagne, Louise McCormick, Suzanne Robinson, Maureen Summers, Michelle Mondor, Delta Fuller, Elaine McClellan, Dorothy Matheson, Davis Robinson, Sue Cryer, Sue Courier, Carolyn Kershaw, Norm Anderson, Bob Gunter, Nancy Tuttle, Sheila Kaiser, Donna Bacon, Jillian Charbonneau, Donna Costello, Barbara Bowen, and Phyllis Moores. We also pray for friends and family listed in the bulletin. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Remembering especially Barbara Hill, who died this month, and Thomas Porter Robinson, in whose memory the vigil candle is lit, give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. 
may we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I invite your prayers, either silently or aloud. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now, turning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life, amen. And now friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share with one another some sign of God's peace. God's peace to all those of you who are watching at home. Will you please be seated for a few announcements? Well, once again, welcome to St. David's Episcopal Church on this a lovely and warm Sunday morning. Um, it is good to be with you all. Um, just a quick word, there is uh, not going to be coffee hour today. I don't see our host has arrived as of yet, so I'm assuming they're not going to be able to be here. So, uh, But this is a wonderful opportunity to um, invite folks uh, who are willing and able to sign up to host coffee hour. It's... Um, Not too difficult. You can feel free to ask one of the old hands if you're a little worried about it, but it's as simple as making coffee and preparing some goodies and treats for uh, just aid in our fellowship following the service. So that said, even though we're not having coffee hour after the service, please do feel free to stick around after the postlude to chat and uh, have some fellowship together, uh, maybe even outside in the shade. (laughs) Um, one other uh, thing that is in the Great Hall is we have, there's a large, uh, as yet undecorated card. Um, and this is a birthday card for Jennifer Bootsy Stewart, who is a member of our congregation who will be celebrating her 100th birthday uh, coming up in uh, early August. And so we thought it'd be wonderful to give her a big card with uh, uh, signatures from many from the congregation. It'd be lovely to get 100 signatures. I'm not sure we'll be able to manage that in the summer, but it would be great to try. Um, that will be out for the next couple of weeks so that we can uh, send that off to her uh, in, t- in time for her birthday. So I hope you are, um, whether you know her or um, just know of her through her work and caring for the Celebration Garden out here, um, it would be a wonderful way of showing her the love of this community, just to have as many names on there as we can. And that's right on the table in the Great Hall there. Are there any other announcements? In that case, the last and most important thing I can think of to share with you is that each and every one of you who seeks a closer relationship with Christ is welcome to receive communion at this table. When the time comes, I invite you to come forward to the altar rail, hold out both hands to receive the bread. If you need a gluten-free wafer, hold out one hand instead of two, and I'll know to give that to you. Um, And at this point in the pandemic, we're not sharing in the common cup, but nevertheless, Deacon Gail will be following along behind me with the, the chalice of wine as a reminder that uh, we re- when we receive just one element, we are fully participating in communion. And if for any reason you're not disposed to receive communion here today, this time is for you and you are a part of us. So if that's the case, I invite you to come forward to the altar rail and cross your arms over your chest, and I'll know to give you a blessing rather than communion. 
And now let us walk in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice unto God. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, beginning on page 361. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
The prayer after communion is on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, remember that life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father who created you, the Son who redeems you, and the Holy Spirit who makes you holy, be among you today and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 711 in the blue hymnal, number 711. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.